Hello everyone, I am Dong Dongshe, a PhD student from Columbia University. Today I will present a new method for dynamic tint analysis using neural program embeddings called new tint. Dynamic tint analysis is a popular technique to track a program's information flow at runtime. It defines the start of a flow as a tint source, the end of flow as a tint sink, then track information flow from source to sink. Security researchers often use dynamic taint analysis to analyze vulnerabilities, detect privacy leakage, or guide fuzzing. The graph here shows a simple use case for fuzzing. The fuzzer wants to know if a user input can affect a certain execution path. Here the user is the taint source, and the taint sync is the branching variable guarding the execution path. It is common to use dynamic taint analysis tool to track the information flow during execution of the tested program. Existing dynamic taint analysis tools are based on predefined taint propagation rules. As a program executes each instruction, these rules propagate taint tags that encode the information flow. For example, suppose we want to track information flow through the move instruction. Before the move instruction is executed, the taint source register EBX has a taint tag. And the taint sync register EEX has no taint tag. After the execution, dynamic taint analysis will propagate the taint tag from source to sync. Although existing rule-based dynamic taint analysis methods are effective, they have three major limitations. First, the static propagation rule are not accurate and it leads to inherent over-taint and under-taint issue. Second, taint propagation can accumulate and amplify this error. Third, the taint propagation incurs large runtime overhead due to instruction level instrumentation. Let's look at a simple example of over-taint issue on rule-based dynamic taint analysis. The taint propagation rule for a common shift instruction is to keep the original taint tag for source and sync. However, if EBX equal to 32, the sync will be zero out and no longer carry any taint information. The static rule cannot consider program contacts and leads to an overflow. On the other hand, under taint error can also occur. Rule-based dynamic taint analysis is based on data flow dependency, while it ignores implicit control flow dependency. As the example shows here, although variable B is affected by variable A, the information flow cannot be detected by rule-based dynamic taint analysis. So we already know the rule-based dynamic taint analysis has three major limitations. It seems the static taint rules and taint propagation are the main bottlenecks. Can we get rid of the static rule or get rid of this taint propagation? To do this, we would need an end-to-end -end method to track information flow. Specifically, the end-to-end -end method should be able to convert the program into an abstract representation, then perform analysis directly on the taint source and taint sinks. Then is it possible to build an end-to-end -end method? Yes, using neural program embedding. Before we dive into the details of neural program embedding, let's walk through this idea on a motivating example. Say we have a simple program with a taint source, two taint sinks, and multiple paths. Common applications like fuzzing would like to track information flow among all the passes, like this. From the source, we execute along path one and propagate the taint tags till to sync one. Then we execute along path two, propagate the blue and purple taint tags. At this node, an over taint occurs due to lack of contacts. 
the red tin tag is wrongly included into propagation. In the end, three tin tags reaches sync one with an overtint, the red tag. Now we execute along path three. Propagate blue and purple tags. In the end, an undertaint occur due to implicit control flow dependency. Only the blue taint tag reaches sync two. This graph show the summary of the taint propagation on three passes. A propagated over tank reaches sync one, and the purple tag is missing on sync two. Traditional dynamic taint analysis can only analyze one path at a time. So it would take three times wrong to analyze all three passes. Moreover, the inherent undertained overtain issue and the error accumulation could happen on some passes. Now, let's look at if we get rid of the heavyweight taint propagation in the middle and replace it with a neural program embedding as shown in this figure. It can analyze multiple paths at one time, rather than perform heavyweight analysis iteratively on each input. It can mitigate undertained over issue by including program contact into consideration. No taint propagation is involved, has no error accumulation. After the motivating example, let's look at the detail of neural program embedding. The neural program embedding uses a neural network to capture a program semantic. It takes in the same tint sources as the real program and outputs the corresponding tint sync. We use the term neural program to refer to the neural network representing the program. The neural program learns the information flow from dynamic traces of program executions since no taint propagation and no error, no accumulated errors, we just need to minimize the end-to-end -end error during training. Then we can perform efficient end-to-end -end analysis directly on the trained neural program. Compared to instruction level taint tracking, the neural program embedding can be thought of as a lightweight program level information tracking. We propose an end-to-end -end method to track information flow using a neural program embedding. Here is the overview of our tool, new taint. Given a program on the left, we first obtain a set of taint sources and sync value and train a neural program as shown in the middle. After the neural program embedding, we perform influence analysis on the neural program to infer the information flow. We obtain values for taint sources and taint sinks from multiple dynamic execution traces. For example, X marked in blue is taint source and Z marked in red is taint sink. We collect a set of X, Z and train a neural network with this value pair. The learned neural network model is a neural program embedding that can approximate the mapping between taint source and taint sink. To learn the information flow from taint sources to sinks, it is crucial to obtain a large and diverse data set. So the first question we have is how to sample a set of taint sources. We chose a common taint source, then randomly flip bytes in the selected source. We could also use a father instead. Then we have then how to obtain corresponding taint sinks. We perform lightweight instrumentation to intercept taint sources and taint sync during dynamic execution. How to process raw data? We represent them as a sequence of bytes that range from 0 to 255. For common taint syncs like a socket struct, user defined variable, or branching variable, we normalize these sync variables using binary normalization or min max normalization. We use a three layers fully connected neural network model. The neural network can be 
a multivariable binary classification or regression, depending on the number of sync and type of sync. Before training, we perform standard normalization to input to ensure better convergence. To extract taint information from the neural program embeddings, we compute the gradient of the taint source with respect to the taint sink. The gradient quantify which part of the taint source affects taint sinks. In this example, we compute the gradient of Z with respect to X. The first byte of X has the large gradient value, while other bytes are almost zero. So we can infer the first byte can affect Z. Next, we will cover our evaluation for new taint. Our evaluation has four parts. We first evaluate the performance of new taint. How accurate is new taint? What is the runtime overhead? Then we evaluate the security application. Can it help diagnose a vulnerability? Can it be applied to fuzzing? In the end, we measure the performance of new taint on different machine learning models and the effect of training dataset on information loss. Hot bytes are the bytes in an input file, which affect program's branching behavior. We measure the hot byte accuracy of new taint against three state-of-the-art rule-based dynamic taint analysis tool on six programs covering six different file formats, ELF, TTF, PDF, XML, JPEG, and ZIP. We also compared the total runtime of new taint and these tools on the input corpus. The results show that new taint achieved on average 10% improvement on hot by accuracy while reducing runtime overhead by a factor 40 over the second best tool, LibDFT. One question we want to ask here is what make new taint accurate and fast? So we perform case studies to compare new taint's performance against a traditional dynamic taint analysis. The code snippet on the lab is from Zillip, a popular compression library. At line one, it reads a file into buffer in, which is taint source, marked in red. At line two and three, it periodically read two consecutive bytes into a variable hole, which is a taint sink, marked in blue. At line four, variable hold is zero out by a shift operation. But traditional dynamic taint analysis cannot capture this semantic and lead to over taint issue. New taint does not have this issue because it does not rely on this static taint propagation rules. It just collects a set of inputs and corresponding sync values. The gradient can indicate the only two bytes of taint sources affect the taint sync. Next, we look at an under taint issue from a simple XML parser. At line one, it reads user input as a taint source. Then it checks if a specified byte in the taint source is equal to special character and sets the parsing flag correspondingly at line two. Later on, at line three, the parsing flag is used as conditional variable to determine the branching behavior. Such a branch conditional variable is common in many parsers, and most rule-based dynamic taint analysis fail to capture the tainted information. Newton instead directly model the taint source and sync by recording a set of values for the user input and corresponding closing type in this example. The learned mapping show how a specified byte affect the sync variable and the branching condition. In the last case study, we look at the runtime overhead of dynamic taint analysis. Traditional dynamic taint analysis incur large runtime overhead because of the heavyweight instrumentation. As shown in the code snippet, line one and line two show a frequently called Huffman decoding procedure. Each line involves a taint creation and taint propagation. The procedure is called in a loop as shown in line three, resulting into a large runtime overhead. On a state of the art tool, libdft, the runtime overhead can shoot up to 10,000 times. On the contrary, new things end-to-end design can easily scale to program with 
intense memory rewrite operation only with minimum runtime overhead. To evaluate Newton's ability to diagnose a known attack, we choose five CV exploits representing five different vulnerability types. We set malicious input as taint sources and vulnerable variable as taint sinks. The results show Newton can detect the information flow from taint source to taint sink on all five known CVEs. We evaluate new taint against three other rule-based dynamic taint analysis tool on taint-guided fuzzing. We measure the edge coverage over 24 hours run on six real-world programs in this experiment. Each tool generates a set of whole bytes that guide the mutation of a common fuzzer backend. Newton achieves 61 more edges than the other tool. We also compare performance on five different machine learning models, known network model, logistic model, and spawning vector machine with three different kernels. The results show new taint known network model achieved the highest hot by accuracy among five machine learning models. We investigate the effect of training data coverage to new taint information loss. A flow is defined as a taint source and sync pair. Information loss occur when the flow from taint source to sync is not detected. The information loss occurs on new taint mainly when training data doesn't cover all the sync variable that appear in the testing data set. To measure the effect of coverage, we measure the total number of flows detected by new taint as we varied the coverage from the training data set. The results show that on four programs, the flow coverage increases with the training data coverage.